Hi again. You don't know this, but this is the second time you've seen me today. This is take two. And in the former take, I had expounded upon how much better I had gotten with the audio. And then come to find out I didn't have it registering on this one. So it wouldn't play back on the other one. So if you just wanted to see me and picking up the dog um, and listening to piano music, you know, I can I can go ahead and make that a, a version. If that's what you want, just, you know, let me know. Ugh. My brain just... I worked in radio. Um, I've been on television a couple times. Um, you know, just community, minor, uh, local things. But, you know, I've been around recording devices most of my life. Recording devices, cameras, you know, I know a few things, but they all just get jumbled and go bye-bye. Everything goes bye-bye on me, especially when I need it. The boys keep looking at me and pretty soon I'm, I'm sure they're gonna put me in a home. <sighs> my youngest son came over the other night and it's been a while since I've had all three of my sons in one room. It's been a long while because Jeff hasn't been home, I think he said, for about 10 years, eight, eight or 10 years. So I'm yelling, Jeffrey, because Joe's in the, in the living room. And Jeff looks at me and goes, Mom. <laughs> and I went, oh, Joseph. <laughs> I mean, and it doesn't matter. I mean, all three of my boys start with the, the J sound, right? And they all have their dad's initials, so nobody complained about anything. And it doesn't matter. I have seen people whose children's names are completely different than each other. And they will still do the same thing that I do. And it's hilarious when your kids start doing the same thing that you do. Because I've seen uh, Jerry, my oldest, when he's trying to call one of his kids, he'll call him by the wrong one. So, you know, it's just, I, I love it. It's what my mom used to call, you get your comeuppance. It's when, when it comes back at you, you know, what, what you're sh dishing out and complaining about about me yes you wait it will be happening to you too so anyway I'm very happy that you could stop by sit down relax chat for a while hopefully you have a nice hot cup of tea or coffee the weather is changing and of course that's making me drag my tail didn't know I had a tail did ya um, there's a lot of things you don't know about me uh, so I hope that uh, you're, you're enduring the weather changes, you know, spring, winter, fall, summer, spring, winter, 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 fall, winter, winter, you know, it depends on what hour of the day, it depends on what it feels like outside. And that's what they say is normal for Ohio weather, especially northern Ohio weather. Drives me nuts. And physically, with my disability, it just exhausts me. And poor Jeff, he's doing all the work outside, but he doesn't seem to mind it. He gets up and gets going and he's just, and he's out there whittling away and pounding on this and banging on that. And it's like, one of the realizations I've had recently is that since Jeff has been home, I'm learning how to lose control. Not of my mind and, and faculties, but of not needing to oversee every little thing not needing to to direct everything now as as a parent um and raising young kids you have to be that way i mean because you, you have to constantly supervise them because they could be doing something so totally wrong it could be dangerous uh or you just don't like the the result but you know there's a way to do it and a way not and um the dog has stirred he realized I'm talking to somebody. Who am I talking to? Oh, look at that little tail wag. <laughs> um, anyway, um, you know, I just let him do. You know, I just let him go at it. Um, in, 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 as a, a, when you have a child, you know, you have to let them figure things out on their own. Ugh. Let's see if I can scoot this back in. Are you going to come visit? <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a frog in my throat. Anyway, 
came to visit. Ugh. Um, so I'm learning, you know, I don't have to be there every second. I don't have to check up on them. I don't have to uh, um, tell them how to do things, you know. <clears throat> I'm way back here. You can't bend that far, huh? Are you getting old, too? He has just been totally enjoying having his big brother, Jeffy, here. And the other night, we had not only Jeffy here, but big brother Jerry and big brother Joseph were here. So he didn't know who to go to the most and beg off of. And, and you know, he was just in seventh heaven. He had all of his favorite people here. And, of course, his big brother Wit that I didn't have to give birth to, but seems to hang around with the others. Um, anyway... So I'm, I'm learning to lose, not need to expend, well, I can expend my energy for one thing. And the other is, you know, just, just let them go. I mean, it's just like I, I used to, uh, a long time ago, I finally had the realization that, you know, you it, don't sweat the small stuff. And how important that realization is and, and to have it in your life. Um, you know, so what if something gets scratched? So what if something gets stained? So what? You know, is your child okay? Is everybody else okay? Are the animals okay? Well, then, then it's okay. Uh, you learn from your mistake and you move on. You know, I mean, that's, that's what it's there for. It's, it's a growth curve. I have a table in the, in the kitchen dining area that, uh, when, uh, the boys moved it, you know, and, and I told the boys, I said, something gets, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. You know, help me move. I appreciate it. Don't worry about it. Um, and a couple things got dinged, but no big deal. I mean, people pay millions of dollars for some of this distressed wood that somebody deliberately stands there and throws chains at. And that doesn't make any sense to me. Distressed. Yeah, well, I'll distress them. I'll grow up with my three. <laughs> and anyway, um, he's got itchy butt. I should say hip, hips itchy hips um but uh when we f i first moved in here i had two cats then and one dog and i've got one new dog because uh zeus passed and uh one of the cats passed and that was tom he was a black cat with the uh he looked uh, sylvester markings you know the cartoon sylvester and tweety pie he was a black cat with those kind of markings. Anyway, my oldest son is sitting there at the table and, and Tom comes and just, you know, sprawls in front of him, you know, demanding attention. Like uh, cats tend to do. <coughs> oh, stop. And um, Jerry gave him attention. He twirled him around. And there would have been a time where I would have been extremely upset because in the course of twirling him around, he didn't know it, but Tom was going like this with his claws. So there was these scratch marks, circular scratch marks in the top of the table. And you can't even tell where they are now, you know, um, because other scratch marks are there as well. But for the longest time, I would look at that and I would smile because at the time, he, uh, my oldest boy wasn't living here. Matter of fact, Joe was the only one that was living here at the time, my youngest. So the other two were, you know, in other places of the country. One was in Kentucky, one was in California at the time, I think. Something like it was either California or Japan. Just recently, he's, he, it was Oklahoma. But um, that's, that's a little moment in time that, you know, there's a little reminder there. It's like when you would, uh, uh, some people would, you know, have the, the marks of, of the kids growing on a door frame, you know, th that's moments of time. And you, and you might even have remembered the day that the, they reached the, the three, three yard, three foot height, <laughs> Amazons, um, you know, those are cherished memories. I'm giving my doggie little pita chips. Just little bites because he thinks it's time to play. I have another thought. It's not a little, little stinker. So anyway, 
I was so proud of myself, I figured out how to download the pictures off my camera onto, you know, directly onto the computer. And I was telling my friend Paulette, who takes me to nice places, as does my sister Sandy, but I was telling my friend Paulette about it, and she goes, oh good, now you can tell me how to do it. I says, I don't think so. <laughs> It was one of those things where as soon as you figured out how to do it, you did it. it was, how the hell did I do that? You know, it's like, I don't know if I could repeat it myself, let alone show somebody else how to do it. So, you know, that's just the way things go. Especially in my life. This little guy, my little tramp. It was funny when we took him to the vet. The vet took one look at him and went, yeah, he's a tramp. <laughs> because he's that terrier look. He's part wire fox terrier, part uh, uh, cairn terrier, and part border terrier. He, I can see, you know, I've, I've been in, and the vet agreed with me. And I'm seeing more and more of the wire fox coming out in him because he's getting the beard and he does have all the curly hair on his legs. Um, but his coloring is more of the border terrier. Now, terriers were bred to uh, go with the landowner and ferret out any, uh, you know, rats, any nests of rats or uh, mice or rabbits or, I don't know if wire fox means that they ferret out the foxes uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't really checked into that one. But I know the cairns in particular were bred to uh, uh, the word cairn comes from uh, uh, over in Great Britain. Uh, out in the country, you'll see a mounds of rocks at different intersections and stuff, you know, on country roads. And I guess it's from where they cleared the fields or they used them as, as road markers and they're called cairns. And um, the cairn terrier is an offshoot of the border terrier, I believe. And they were bred to ferret out the rats and rabbits and stuff that would burrow into those mounds of stones and make, make a home. And the border terrier would walk with the homeowner as you know, he walked about the property, and would, and the terrier would be checking out different areas, and the nose is constantly twitching. I mean, they're, they're, and they'll stand there, and and nothing's moving but the nose, and it's they're really hilarious to watch sometimes. But um, uh, they will go with the homeowner, and they will follow the scents and stuff, and and keep track of who's here, who's not supposed to be here. Um, where things have taken up residence. And he proved himself to be a true terrier uh, last night. we uh, I was uh, sitting here in the den slash bedroom slash, you know, all that stuff. Um, uh, and I can see out my window onto the uh, uh, screen porch, which is now screened and tarped porch because Jeff's making it so he can smoke out there in the winter. <laughs> um, but uh, he was barking like crazy. And I knew Jeff was inside. So, you know, I didn't know what was going on. So, you know, I said, yeah, I think he's found something. I was talking to my friend at the time. And so I go out to check. And sure enough, he, he, he had something cornered underneath a corner shelf that was out there. And Jeff came out within like two minutes after I did and to check it out to see what, what the noise was all about. Could not get him to come back in the house, could not get him away from that corner because that's what he was bred to do, was discover something that's there that shouldn't be there. I mean, he has barked at a mound of laundry at the foot of my bed because it wasn't there when he left the room. He came back in the room, there's this big hump of something. And he barked and barked, and this is when I first got him. And sure enough, once I, I showed him what it was and I set it down, oh, okay, it's fine. But he was doing his job. Something's there that shouldn't be there. He'd go outside and the, and the guy behind me would, be, would have put his laundry out to dry because he, he loves the, the, the smell of, of 
air dried laundry and he'd be barking like crazy because that stuff wasn't there before it has no business being there so that's what the breed you know is, he's very intelligent it's like wait a minute something's out of place here and he'll let me know when something falls over or what whatever so he's very intelligent he's very much terrier and so he had that thing cornered and he wasn't going to leave it alone I had to get the dog leash and, and put him on the uh, on the lead and bring him back in the house. And I was talking to my friend about that. And I says we need to teach him to stand down, um, in or, uh, as part of that sequence. I mean, he discovered something, he alerted it, alerted mm -hmm. us to it, and then we have to let him know, you know, good boy, you did your job. Now stand down, and we'll take over. You know, so we need to find some kind of command to do that. Ah! Is that right? Go find the kitty cat. He likes to chase the kitty cat around. He wants another chip. So anyway, he did his job, and it was so cool. Uh, you know, Jeff, because he wouldn't stop barking, was a little irked with him. But the way I look at it is he did his job. Uh, that's what his breed was bred for. And when you yell at somebody for being who they are and what they are, that doesn't make any sense. So the way I look at it, is what I need to teach, communicate with him. Is that okay, you did your job, thank you, good boy. Good boy, you did your job, yes. And he's going. Um, and then, you know, teach him what to do next. You know, uh, I, I really have to teach him when to be quiet, but uh, on command. But I will never stop a dog from barking because that's how they communicate. That's how that's how they talk. Um, and you can tell from the different barks and the different body gestures, you know, what it is they're trying to tell you if you pay attention. Um, and, you know, sometimes I just don't have the patience. I don't have the energy. I mean, we're all like that. But generally speaking, you know, that's... You have to accept them for who they are and what they are. Just like you want to be accepted for who you are and what you are. And I love all animals. Uh, of course, I'm particularly fond of wolf and dog. Um, to my mind, all, all the animals, they have that little piece of God in them. And we have it too. So you're just as special as, as your favorite animal, as your favorite being, you know, as your fa favorite angel, uh, you know, whatever. Angels. I, I, I got to do some research on angels and share what I find because I, I love the thought of them. Um, except for that one experience that uh, I revealed a couple episodes ago. Um, I, you know, that's about the only personal angel experience that I've had. I was talking to a neighbor lady, uh, Cammie and I. Um, we were we used to spend hours sitting out on the front porch that's enough no that's enough sitting on the front porch talking about this that and the other and i was you know i was i'm spiritual i'm not religious because i'm not um no you can't have that it's all gone no more um don't make me get up from this chair anyway uh, through my influence, you know, we, well, through the course of conversations, uh, you know, we talked about spirit and we talked about guardian angels. And I think I shared that story with her. And it wasn't too long after that, she had an experience where the only thing she can explain was her guardian angel reached across and corrected her driving. She was skidding on ice or something, and she's always been terrified of it. And I don't remember exactly. I'll have to ask her again about it. Stop. I don't have anything more. Um, but she had an experience and, she's, and, she's, and she swore it wasn't her. Um, that it was divine intervention. And um, she found out there really are guardian angels. Tramp, that's enough. I don't care. That's enough. That's called demand barking, I think, from some of the little research that I've done online with other people, you know, them telling about their experiences. And you don't give in to demand barking because, you know, that's like a cat throwing a tantrum. 
Oh. Even me, my little two-year-old. <laughs> you are something else, little doggy. Yeah, I'll take care of you here in a minute. Okay, well, I guess he's demanding that I quit yakking. So I guess I'll quit yakking. And and ah! take two. Enough, tramp. And call it for this time. But I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you had a good time. I hope you uh, are a little bit recharged after sitting down, putting your feet up, listening to me ramble, having something to drink, and just taking a break. We try to do everything pell-mell. And if you watch the animals, they rest. That's part of their cycle. Rest is just as important as work, and play is just as important as the other two. So bring that into your life. So, until the next time I see you, I hope everything goes well for you. Take care, and may God bless.